you can start now. Okay, to, uh, you know that the talk today is uh, uh, about uh, Diego Garcia Lucas. Um, um, this is about a counterexample to the modular isomorphism problem. The, the people who are involved in the business know that this is one of the, uh, the oldest and the hardest problems in the, in the theory of group algebras. Okay, I asked all the people to switch off the microphones. And, and of course, only the speaker has to have the microphone. Okay, Diego, plus you can start. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank you, the organizer, for allowing me to present our results in this, in this seminar and to you all for your virtual presence. Uh, as Professor Dransky mentioned, it is about the existence of, my talk is about the existence of counter example to the modularism of this problem. And it is based in a joint work with uh, my thesis advisors, Angel Del Rio and Leo Margolis. Uh, and the talk will be structured in two main parts. In the first one, I will present the modular isomorphism problem as a concrete case of the more general isomorphism problem for group rings. And then I'll give a list of results for which the modular isomorphism problem is, uh, is, is known true. And uh, then I'll give some idea of, of how is the group algebra of a finite field over a field of characteristic P, which is the, the main object involved in the statement of, of this problem. In the second part, I will present the counterexample in itself. And then since the proof is, is very easy, I will try to give a almost complete uh, proof of, of, the, of it. And I'll finish the talk with some kind of some remarks and some open question that some questions remain open after the, the counterexample. Uh, well, uh, in this talk, R will in, let R be a ring and G be a finite group. Uh, the group ring of G over R is the set of finite sums uh, of elements of the group of the group with coefficient in the in the ring R. Uh, with the of sum and the product extended by linearity, this has a, the structure of a ring. And if we furthermore, uh, furthermore assume that the R is a commutative ring, it has a structure of an R algebra. Uh, in the rest of the talk, we use the following notation. R will denote um, a commutative ring or a field. Uh, F will be an arbitrary field of characteristic P, and K will be the field with, with P elements. Then uh, the isomorphism problem for, for group rings in general asks, given a ring and two finite groups, if, the, if an exist, the existence of an isomorphism between the group rings over R of G and H implies that the groups themselves are isomorphic. Uh, this question was initially posed by Graham, Graham Hickman in his thesis, and Hickman himself uh, realized that in general it has no positive answer since if you have two finite abelian groups of the same order, then the group algebras over the complex field are always isomorphic, no matter if the groups are isomorphic or, or not. Uh, well, this Problems. Uh, this problem can be restated as a problem as group basis inside the same group ring. Uh, that is, this problem is the question if H is a group basis in a group ring R A G, are the G and H isomorphic? Where by a group basis I mean a basis of the of R G as a R module such that uh, H is a group. That is, it is multiplicatively multiplicatively closed. Uh, well. Uh, although this question has a negative answer, one can try to think a modification of the statement so that it could be a, have a positive answer. For example, try to strengthen the, the hypothesis. And this leads us to a question, which is a, this question one that uh, asks if we have that the group rings are isomorphic over every possible ring field. Uh, does it imply that the groups are isomorphic? And, Trying to answer this question as a first approach to this question, a Passman a found in the year 65 a set of a number of non isomorphic groups of order P to the N for each order P to the N, such that they are isomorphic, the, the group algebra are isomorphic over every field of characteristic different than P. This in particular shows that the characteristic of the field is very important in this problem and that the um, if we if one expect a positive result to this question in general, for if if the groups are p groups, the only relevant field will be the the field with with p with the field fields the only relevant field will be the fields in of characteristic p. Uh, however, this question one has negative answer as they showed in the year six 
71. Uh, since there exists uh, a pair of uh, non-isomorphic metabelian finite group of order divisible by two different primes, so they are, no, they are not p groups, such that the group algebras are isomorphic over every, over every field. So this question is st still has negative answer. So uh, inspired by the result of Pasman, one can think the restriction of this question to substituting every field by every field like of characteristic P and the groups by finite groups. This is uh, this question two. And um, one can observe that every field of characteristic P can, uh, is a vector space over the field of, of, of P element, hence one can, if we, you have an isomorphism between the group algebra of these two finite P groups over uh, the field of P elements, tensorizing by the by the any field of characteristic P, one can obtain a, a, an isomorphism between the group algebra of G and H over a, every field of characteristic P. Hence, question two is equivalent to the, the question restricted to the field of P elements. This is the classical statement of the modular isomorphic problem. And it was already mentioned in his, in, by Richard Brower in his uh, survey of uh, 1963, uh, representation of finite groups. Um, before we continue with the modular isomorphic problem, let's think back to the question one and think what happens if we substitute the word field with the word uh, range. That is, if we have this question here. Um, if this, of course, this hypothesis is uh, considerably stronger than the hypothesis with every field, since uh, every ring is a field, but every field is a ring. So, um, of course, uh, we can observe that the every ring is a, is a module over the the ring of integers. So, uh, integers. So, uh, arguing as before. One can see that the isomorphism between the group rings over the integer it implies isomorphism over of the group rings over every possible commutative rings ring. Hence, uh, this question three is equivalent to the so-called isomorphism problem for integral coefficient, which states if the which asks if the group algebra of two finite groups are isomorphic over the field over the ring of integers, does it imply that the groups themselves are isomorphic? Um, regarding these two questions, uh, regarding the, um, the possibility of obtaining a positive answer for the isomorphism problem in general, uh, Passman in his book of the, of the 77 um, says that there are, however, two limits of hope. Uh, the first one concerns the uh, integral group ring, that is, of question three prime, and the second concerns P groups over the field with, with P element, that is, uh, the modular isomorphism problem. Uh, now we know that both uh, glimmers of hope have negative answer. Uh, the first one, uh, at the, at the, um, along the years, there were a succession of uh, um, positive answer of increasing generality. For example, uh, the question is known to have positive answer for abelian groups, uh, for mid abelian groups, for p groups, and for nilpotent groups. Uh, however, in the, the, there are more results that are in this question, even more general, but I'm not going to mention them. And the thing, important thing for us is that uh, in 2001, Martin Hardwick found two groups of this big order such that the group algebra over the ring of integers are isomorphic, and hence the group algebra over every, possible, over, over every ring are also isomorphic. So uh, the first this first glimmer of hope has negative answer, and the modular isomorphic problem was left standing alone. And um, well, before give the list of results for which the modular isomorphic problem, the um, results about the modular isomorphic problem, I'd like to consider this uh, a small modification of the statement of the problem that is substituting the field with p element with an arbitrary field of characteristic p. Of course, a positive answer to this new question two prime prime um, yields a positive answer to the question two and hence the modular isomorphism problem. But the converse is not true, or at least it is not known to be true. Uh, for the, this reason, I like to, uh, I'll, it makes sense to distinguish the results about the modular isomorphism problem that gives also positive answer to this new, this question two prime and the ones that they, as they are, they, only give answer to this question, to the original question. Uh, well, 
So uh, in loop, there will be the, the result that uh, holds for every field of characteristic P. In, in black, there will be the results that um, holds only the bends in the primality of the field. And in bold black, there will be the results, uh, will be the results uh, which are especially relevant for our, our example. Well, um, the first result about the modularization of exploring is due to the skins in the 56, and it uh, it holds for every possible pill. And it's uh, it says that the modularization of exploring has positive answers if the groups are abelian. Um, this problem has also positive answer for a lot of um, groups of a small order. I'm not going to read them all, but the, the general idea is that the, it holds for um, the groups of order dividing pi to p to the five for arbitrary primes, of order div dividing two to the eight for the first prime, and of order dividing three to the seven for the second prime. Uh, another results are well, the list is, is, is very long, but the 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 main idea I want you to, to get is that the most of them are uh, about classes of group of very restricted structure. For example, these are P groups with third dimension subgroup, which in uh, for example, which for example for P odd, these are just result with uh, these are just group with uh, exponent P and the impotency class two. So it is not a very complicated class. And still, one can show that this holds for uh, every possible field, that, but since the proof is a string, a strongly dependent on the primality of, of the field. Um, another thing that is clear is that the, most of the results are about the field with P elements, so uh, except uh, for a few exceptions, such as this of two groups of maximum class, uh, metastatic P groups, uh, or P groups with center of, indi of index P squared. Uh, and I'd like to mm, highlight the result of, of Baginski that the state that the model of this problem has a positive answer for two generated P groups with potency class three and elementary abelian derived sub. Also, I want to highlight the result of Roche and Del Rio that states that this problem has positive answer for two generated groups with potency class two and a cyclic derived sub. Uh, this result is, is true for every field uh, if. Uh, if we assume that P is an odd prime and for P equals two is only known to be true for, for the field with P elements, with, with two elements. Well, this is uh, all, all, most of the results known for the modularization of this problem. Um, and now I'm going to try to describe the, the modular group algebra, which is the, as I said, the, the main object involved in this, in this problem. And, um, uh, try to give a perspective of how this, in this case, the group algebra is a very special case in the realm of group algebras of any group of fields in general. Um, let F be a field of characteristic P and G a finite P group and consider the, this augmentation map, which is the map that given a formal combination of elements of the group, it uh, returns the, the sum of the coefficients. That is, it is the same as the uh, homomorphism which uh, takes every element of the group to the one in the field. Uh, the kernel of this map is known as the augmentation ideal of the group algebra and is known by I of Fg. And it coincides with the Jacobson radical of Fg. Moreover, this uh, ideal is nilpotent. That is, there is uh, some integer n such that the nth power of, of this ideal is, is the zero subspace. Um, moreover, uh, it is not only the Jacobson radical of the algebra, but it is the uh, only maximal ideal of, of, of this ring. So Fg is a local ring, and uh, every element of, of Fg is of the form an element of the field plus an element of the Jacobson radical. In particular, the group of units is of, of this form. That is, every element outside the Jacobson radical is a unit. And uh, we'd like to uh, highlight this. Uh, Mm, subgroup of the group of unit, which is called the group of normalized unit, we denote it by V, and it is the set of uh, elements of the group such that the augmentation map take the value one. Well, uh, now let's compare this algebra with the uh, a group algebra of, of a finite group of graphene in general. Uh, let R be a field and G be a finite group. 
if the characteristic of the field does not divide the order of the group, then uh, by mass theorem, it is uh, the group algebra is semi-simple. And hence, you can uh, obtain the weather on the composition of, of, of the algebra as a direct sum of matrix algebras over some division rings. And one, in, in order to study the isomorphic problem or the problem in, uh, about, uh, in, about this algebra, one can try to study this decomposition and obtain results from, from this. On the other hand, if the characteristic of the field does not divide the order of the group, then by mass theorem again, uh, the group algebra is not is no longer semi-simple, but one can find a decomposition of this form in which uh, B1BN is a complete set of orthogonal primitive central impotence in the in the algebra. And uh, these are uh, two-sided ideal, uh, two-sided principle ideal generated, generated by each one of the BI. And then this is a a direct sum of uh, to generate uh, of to set the ideal, and each one of these ideal is known as a block of the algebra. Uh, or cases in this situation with the particular 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 particularity, sorry, uh, that um, uh, there is only one idempotent here different than zero is the one. So uh, there is no such a decomposition since the only block is the group algebra itself. So if we have if one has ha wants to study the group algebra of a finite P group over a field of characteristic P, it has to study the group algebra as a whole since there is no meaningful decomposition. Um, in that situation, the only useful tool we have to study this algebra is the so-called uh, Jennings theory, which is based in the in the following definition. Uh, consider the intersection of the uh, group basis G with the set of elements of the form one plus an element in the eth power of the augmentation idea. This, um, this group is called the i dimension subgroup of G and the, and the series of, of these subgroups of G is called the Jennings series of G. Uh, in principle, this group seems to depend on the, on the, on the group algebra since uh, it's defined using the group algebra and it seems dependent on the field. However, Jennings proved that uh, it is not the case. Jennings proved that the, this series of subgroups satisfy this recursive relation, which, uh, as you can see, kind of do not depend on the on the on the field or on the group algebra, and hence this and this uh, and this property defines the the groups uh, completely. So they are independent of the of the field. Uh, here, uh, the brackets means that this is the subgroup of G generated by the commutator with one entry in this group and the other entry in G. And this to the P means that this is the group generated by P powers of elements in this, in this group. And the main property of this uh, series of subgroups is that they uh, allow us to build a, a basis of the group algebra that behaves well regarding the um, um, power of the augmentation idea. Let's see. Um, in first place, we observe that the the successive quotients of elements of uh, of um, dimension subgroups are elementary abelian groups. Hence, one can consider them as uh, vector spaces over the field with p elements, and then take the basis of each one of them. And of course, for each element of the basis, one can consider it as an element of the group taking a frame. Uh, doesn't matter which one, and consider the set of union of all these bases as element of, of the group G, this G1, GL. Then uh, Jennings proved that the, this set B of product of this form, of this form, which uh, were in the exponent are between zero and P minus one, and uh, not all of them are zero, form a basis of the augmentation idea. Moreover, if we uh, Delete this, delete, remove this um, condition. That is, we allow all the exponents to be zero. That is, we allow one to be one element of this set. Uh, then it is a basis for uh, the group algebra FG, com the complete group algebra. The interesting property of this uh, basis is that they uh, they behave well regarding the uh, powers of the augmentation ideal in the following sense. There is a sequence of subsets of a Jennings basis, B1, B2, which is uh, completely determined by the group, but I'm not going to, the, to explain how, uh, such that uh, 
the T power of the augmentation ideal has this set BT as a basis. Using these ideas and the, this theory of Jennings, the, the most of the results I mentioned before were obtained. Uh, in order to give an idea of how this works, I want to explain one argument of uh, Herbert and Soriano that uh, could be a, is an approach to attack the modularism of this problem. For that, I will need this uh, lemma of Passion Segal, which uh, only works for the field K with P elements. Uh, and uh, the important thing of it is that there is some property which depends on the group passage G. Uh, this star property that if it holds for a group basis G, it then it holds for every possible group basis uh, G tilde. And moreover, uh, it is easy to see that the, since this ideal is nilpotent, uh, if we take if we take uh, n big enough, then this is one plus J, and this is the trivial group. So uh, this property ho uh, holds for every possible group basis. Given a, a, an idea, an ideal or a multiplicatively close, this is a property about an ideal or a multiplicatively close uh, space of KGJ. Then the receipt, the receipt of, of uh, Herwig and Soriano is as follows. We start with a group basis G. Then we use this group basis to construct a, a genetic basis, and the genetic basis uh, is used to construct some ideal J as big as possible, satisfying this star property. Then, by the lemma, um, every group basis intersects trivially with this set. So it follows that uh, every group basis embeds in this in the group basis in the, uh, sorry in the group in the group group of units of this question algebra. Hence, if we have taken j big enough, then this group of units could be small enough so that we can consider. We can work on it uh, in an efficient way, and we can find uh, every um, subgroup in this group of the order with order the order of G. Then two things might happen. Um, the first one is that the every one of these groups are isomorphic to G. In, in that case, we have proof that the modulation of this problem holds in for this group, since every group basis is has to be here. And on the other hand, it might happen that uh, there are some of these groups that are not isomorphic to G. Then one has to consider uh, alternative arguments. And for example, one has to take all the possible primates of, of G in the group algebra, and this is a very difficult task. Was trying to use this argument for the groups in the next slide, uh, how the counterexample was was found. Um, now, now we are ready to, to present the, the group of the counter example. Let n1 and n2 be two integers with n1 greater than n2 and n2 greater than, than 2. Uh, and consider these uh, two groups here. And um, here the notation exponentiation by y means the, 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 the conjugate uh, by the of x by y, and the commutator are taken this, this way. Uh, observe that this presentation are very similar. If we identify x with a, y with b, and z with c, then the presentation is exactly the same, except in this last relation in which uh, in h, b commutes with c, but in g, y does not commute with z. Uh, one first observation is that these groups, uh, in spite they are very, they have a very similar presentation, they are not isomorphic. This can be easily seen considering the following. Uh, one can check that the centralizer of the derived subgroup is of G, is of this form. And then, although it's not completely necessary for the argument, it uh, is use useful to see that uh, everything commute. Uh, take quotient modulo the derived subgroup. So uh, we have uh, this quotient here that is generated by x, square, x squared and xy. Since x has ordered 2 to the n1, this element has ordered 2 to the n1 minus one, and this element has already to do the n1. So the exponent of this group is to do the n1. On the other hand, for h, the centralizer of the derived subgroup of h is of this form. Then using the, the same argument, we have that the quotient model of the derived subgroup is of this form. But here, a squared ha a has ordered to do the n1, hence a squared has ordered to do the n1 minus one, and b 
has ordered uh, 2 to the n2, which is strictly smaller than 2 to the n1. Hence, the exponent of this group is 2 to the n1 minus 1. Since these groups are obviously a characteristic subgroups, then the group GNH cannot be isomorphic. Hence, we have proved the, the first part of our main theorem, which states that GNH are non isomorphic, but for every field of characteristic 2, the group algebras of GNH are, are isomorphic. The, to prove it, uh, of course, by the consideration before about the tensor products of a uh, field of characteristic two, uh, one can, uh, we can limit ourselves to prove the results for the field with P elements. So we, from, now, from now on, we work in the group algebra of H over the field with P elements. In here, we consider the elements X tilde uh, equals A and Y tilde equals this element in K. And consider the group generated by these two elements as a subset of the, of the group algebra. We will show that this group is a group basis of the of the of KH that is not isomorphic to H. In fact, it will be isomorphic to G. The proof is divided in two main steps. The first step is to show that G is an epimorphic image of G. G tilde is an epimorphic image of G. To do so, uh, it suffices to show that for x tilde, y tilde, and z tilde defi defined this way, uh, these elements satisfy all the defining relation of the group G. Uh, the first relation is obvious since x tilde is A and A has already to do the n one since the first relation is, is clear. Uh, for next, we will show this relation here, which is, um, is based on the fact that x tilde squared is A squared, which is in the center of the group algebra. Hence, uh, we have that one, that, that the X squared commutes with everything in the group algebra, in particular with Y tilde. And this is this commutator is one. And using this well-known formula for commutators in a group, uh, we have this identity. Hence, we obtain the, the desired uh, relation. Uh, this last relation uh, can be proved uh, centered in the same way as this one, but with a little a bit more of complications since this is not so clear that y tilde is in the center of the group algebra. To that end, uh, observe that, uh, to prove that, uh, observe that uh, these elements here are in the, in the center of, of the group H, hence they are in the center of the group algebra, and that this set here is um, a conjugacy class. It is well known that the, the sum of all the elements in a conjugacy class is always in the center of the group algebra over every, over every field. And in fact, the sets of all sums of elements in conjugacy classes are uh, a basis of the center of the group algebra. Anyways, uh, one can compute y tilde square uh, in, a straightforward, in a straightforward way and one find this expression where each one of these elements here are in the center by this reason and with the only exception of these two ones, but the sum is a sum of the elements of conjugacy class and hence is also in the center. So y tilde squared is in the center and we can apply exactly the same argument as before to show that uh, z tilde to the y tilde is the inverse of z tilde. Now we are going to prove that uh, the order of y tilde uh, divides to the n2. But then we, also, we will also exploit that the y tilde squared is in the center so we have this identity here. And then since this is in the center and every element here is in the center except these two, but B and C commute, we can uh, take powers as if we were in the in an abelian group ring, in, in the group ring of an abelian group. And always since the characteristic is two and we are taking two powers, we can just take powers of the summons. Hence, we have uh, this expression here where uh, the exponents of each one of the terms exceeds the, the order of, of the term, except in this for these two one, these two here. Uh, but this is one, so this is one element plus the same element, twice this element. We are in characteristic two, so this vanishes. This is one plus one, this vanishes, so we are left with only this, and this is also one. So uh, we obtain the side result. The last the relation we need to prove is um, that the order of z is divides four, and to that end, uh, we use another argument. Consider uh, the idea, the principal ideal j generated by the element 
C minus one in K8. One can easily see that this ideal is mm, two side. And since C has uh, order four, then the hypotenuse index of this ideal is also four. Moreover, uh, since C is a generator of the derived subgroup of the group H, the quotient uh, of KH modulo J is commutative. So um, the, the quotient of the group of units modulo this subgroup is also commutative. Hence, the derived subgroup of the group of units, uh, normalized units, it's contained in this subgroup. Uh, in particular, every, you, every uh, element in the commutator subgroup has order a dividing four, since uh, we are in characteristic two, and we can separate things. Um, in particular, set, which is a commutator by definition. Uh, here, set tilde is a commutator by definition. This should be a set tilde. is um, contained here, and so is one. This proves that a G tilde is an epimorphic image of G. The second part of the proof uh, is to is proving that um, G tilde contains a basis for K8, and to show that uh, we need uh, a general result regarding group algebras that is the following. Um, it says that if we have a group algebra H and a sub, not a group algebra, a finite dimensional algebra over a field A and a subalgebra B, if the subalgebra B together with the Jacobson radical of the algebra generates the whole algebra, then the subalgebra was the algebra itself. In particular, in our case, uh, the algebra will be the augmentation, uh, will be the augmentation ideal. Then it is known that the Jacobson radical of the augmentation ideal is the augmentation ideal to the square. And uh, we have the following, the following consequence. Since uh, if we have a generating set for the group uh, H, say G1, GT, in our case, D is two, uh, then the set of elements G1 minus one, GD minus one is a generating set of the, um, of the augmentation ideal. So by the previous proposition, if we modify this element, adding some element in the square of the augmentation ideal, this will also be a, a generating set of the augmentation ideal. To use this, uh, observe that uh, C is in the derived uh, subgroup, hence uh, C minus one is in the square of the commutation ideal. So uh, if we are working model the square of the commutation ideal, we can also substitute C by one. Well, the first observation is that X tilde is A, so there's no mystery here. The other observation is that Y tilde is like B modulo uh, this square of the commutation ideal. And C this is very easy since by definition, y tilde is of this form. We can uh, substitute c by one by the pre my previous comment. Comment um, here we can we have an obvious identity uh, because we are working modulo uh, we are working in a field of characteristic two. So this is this identity is is trivial, and observe that this element here is the augmentation ideal, and this element here is the augmentation ideal. Hence, this is in the square of the augmentation ideal. We can kill it. So this is b. Then we can since a and B generate the group H, then X tilde minus one and Y tilde minus one generate the augmentation ideal of KH. So one X tilde and Y tilde generate the KH as an algebra. In particular, the group generated by X tilde and Y tilde, and of course one, uh, generates KH as a vector space. So it follows that uh, this G tilde has to contain a basis of KH. And this proof or, or second claim. Then the proof is, is, is almost done since we have proved that G tilde is an epimorphic image of G. So uh, in particular, the order of G tilde cannot exceed the order of G. So we have this inequality here. On the other hand, G tilde contains a basis of KH. So we have this inequality here. On the other hand, uh, the dimension of KH as a K algebra is by definition the, the order of H, which was uh, the order of G. So all these inequalities must be equalities. In particular, this equality implies that G and G tilde must be isomorphic. And the other equality show that the G tilde is indeed a basis of K. And this uh, completes the proof of the, of the main theorem.
just to 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 finish with uh, the talk i'd like to make a few remarks and open and mention some open questions for example uh, for simplicity in from now on let's take uh, n1 equals 4 and n2 equals 3 and gh are the group semiconductor example with with these parameters then they have order to do the nine uh, one can check, well, by the, by the argument before, one can check that the exponent of the centralizer of the first group is 2 to the 3, and but the exponent of the centralizer of the second group is 2 to the 4. So they have different. On the other hand, the, one can check using GAP, for example, or another uh, other complete algebra system, that the order of the automorphic group of G is 2 to the 15, but the order of the automorphic group of H is 2 to the 14. So this number is also different. And finally, if we note by ng the number of conjugate side classes of cyclic derived subgroup of G, then uh, these numbers are also different for G and H. Uh, in particular, this it follows that the these three numbers are not uh, are group, group theoretically invariant, but they are not determined by the by the group algebra. Uh, there are some other uh, variance in this situation, for example, the number of conjugate classes of groups, not necessarily cyclic, or is also different, but we are not especially interested in, in, in that thing. Uh, from this thing, that the, the fact that NG and NH are different, we obtain that the group algebras uh, of GNH over the rational field are not isomorphic. Since uh, this number of uh, conjugate classes of cyclic subgroups, it coincides with the number of the composable direct summons of the group algebra of over the, the rational field. Hence, uh, the isomorphism problem for all fields, uh, as I mentioned it before, restricted to be groups, uh, still has uh, is, is still open since uh, all groups are not counterexamples. That is, uh, if G and H are finite group, it is not known whether if uh, whether uh, the fact that G and H have isomorphic group algebras over every field implies that G is isomorphic to G, G is isomorphic to H. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'd like to uh, compare or, or examples with the known results for the modular isomorphic problem. It is known that the MIP has a positive answer if um, uh, if the groups G and H are two generated with slightly derived subgroup and a uh, new potency class two, while all groups are very similar since they are two generated with slightly derived subgroup but with new potency class three, just one more. On the other hand, uh, between the groups that are two generated with new potency class three, uh, MIP is known to have positive answer for elementary abelian with groups with uh, elementary abelian derived subgroup. While uh, Gen H have a cyclic derived subgroup of order four, of course the 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 cyclic direct, the cyclic subgroup of order four is the closest thing you can have to an elementary abelian group without being elementary abelian. And finally, uh, MIP has positive answer for groups of order two to the A, and our examples have order two to the n with n greater or equal than, than nine. So our smallest example has order two to the nine. Uh, this means that these results, although this seems that they are not especially strong since they have a lot of hypotheses, they are as sharp as they could be. Um, okay, then uh, another question, well, the, the most obvious clay class of groups, big groups, for which the, the modular isomorphic problem is still open is the class of groups with the uh, odd order, that is the modular isomorphic problem for P greater than two. And inside this, this great family of groups, uh, I think they are of, uh, of a special interest, the, the families of P group, the cyclic derived subgroup, the family of P groups which are two generated, and the family of groups with new potency class three. Because the, in the case P equals two, uh, the counterexamples are inside the intersection of these three classes. Um, and Rio, me, Mastanakovsky, and myself, we were working in trying to answer the modular isomorphic problem in the intersection of these two classes of group that we have still not clear uh, answer. Uh, nevertheless, we have proved uh, that for this class of groups, uh, the following results. Uh, let G a finite P group with P and assume that G has cyclic derived subgroup. 
and let f be an arbitrary field of characteristic p. Then the exponent of the centralizer of the ripe subgroup of G is determined by the group algebra, no matter what the field is. This is in a striking contrast with the um, with the odd case, since uh, we have shown that this is not a and this is not determined by the group algebra. So this uh, suggests that the different the, the cases P odd and P even will be um, huge and that there is no easy or naive way to find an analog of the counter of the counter example in the in the case P odd. On the other hand, this is not especially surprising, uh, especially in the class of group with cyclic derived subgroup, since uh, these groups are known to be regular for P odd, but uh, for P equals two, there is uh, no regular two groups that is not which is non-available. So uh, these are all non-regular for, for P equals two. Well, uh, one, well, a pair of, of questions more. Uh, one question is uh, this question seven that was already mentioned, mentioned by Robert Sandling in his survey, the summary of his problem for group rings in the 85 and ask if uh, MIP has positive answer for group of MIP potency class two. In regarding this, he, he says that it is a set reflection on the state of the modularism of this problem that the case of class two groups is yet to be decided in general. To the best of my knowledge, this has not improved since, and it is still as open as when Sanding mentioned this. And to finish my talk, I'd like to mention another more question, which is not especially related to the counter example, but it's, um, I think it's more interesting now that there are counter examples and the counter example are not uh, right with this question. Uh, this is regarding if the if the primality of the group is important for the positive results we have. Uh, in particular, the question is uh, if there exists finite P group G and H and a field depth characteristic P such that the group algebra over the field with P elements are not isomorphic, but the group algebras over this concrete field that could be very big, infinite, or very big field are isomorphic. This is, uh, of course, answer this question in the narrative is to show that question two prime prime before is indeed equivalent to the modular isomorphism, to the modular isomorphism problem, but uh, it is not clear if it has. There are groups like that or not. Well, this is everything I wanted to say today, and I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. I think that we have to thank you for the very nice talk. Uh, Kadimik Drensky, we cannot hear you. And now I don't speak, so you cannot hear. Me. I see, I see, because the the sound uh, went uh, bad for a while before that, and I I something went wrong. Well, good. Please continue. I ask whether there are some questions or comments. I cannot see. I personally try to solve this problem negatively, but. The, Nevertheless, I think that everyone who has this counterexample should be very, very proud of it. So thank you, Diego, once again for your talk. Thank you very much. If no other questions, it will be at 4 p.m. because the speaker is in, in, in Rio de Janeiro now. And uh, um, it will be announced. Uh, um, in the home page of the institute, and this is already announced in the home page of the seminar. And also, you, uh, the people who, uh, who usually receive information from the seminar will, will receive this information once again in, in, in the beginning of the next week. So now you have chat in any possible language on any topics for a couple of minutes. Okay, I will I will stop recording now. The official part is over.